<clears throat> awesome. And okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the call tonight. Uh, tonight we are featuring Dr. Tony O'Donnell, and I'm going to read you a little bit of his bio, and then I'm going to let him tell you his story. So Dr. Tony is an herbalist, a nutritionist, a naturopath, and the author of 15 books. He has his doctorate in clinical psychology with a PhD in addiction. He's the formulator of our isofruits and isogreens, as well as tons of other products, and he can be seen on ABC, NBC, CBS, as well as Fox News Nationwide. He's syndicated talk show host on Talk Radio Network on Sundays, and Dr. Tony's from Ireland and resides in Malibu, California. So, Dr. Tony, welcome to our team call, Thank and you. we're happy to have you here. I'm and uh, if wait. you can tell us a little bit your story of how the Greens came to be, because I know you have a really powerful story about that. Yeah, I have. And thank you so much for letting me be on this call. I was so excited. I couldn't wait to tell you the truth. I was saying, oh, check in with my schedule. Check in with my schedule. <laughs> I, was, I, was, uh, I was really uh, excited to do this call. So I grew up in Ireland, uh, as most of you know, family of 11. I was a sickly child. I was always at the doctor, and it bothered me greatly. And I wanted to find out why I was being sick and why I was taking all this medication and why I didn't like taking this medication. Why was I having incredible nightmares and why I was so afraid as a young man I just knew this medication was definitely the devil's work I knew it wasn't good and I wanted to free myself from that and so I started to um, read about plants and I was a farm boy growing up in Ireland I knew an awful lot about farming I still do I boast now that I know a lot about farming because I really did grow up on a farm and a small farm albeit but I also worked on other people's farms neighbors and, and uh, the such so it's like around our little neighborhood where we grew up and back in Ireland, most people were farmers. So I understood from the farmers how important it was to fertilize the land, how important it was to give back to Mother Nature, how important it was to cultivate, how important it was to hydrate, really important, how important it was to till the land and take care of it, and how important it was to provide the right nutrients. And if the right, if the right nutrients, Teresa, were missing, we had a terrible harvest. Everybody complained, oh, it's an awful harvest. And that's what's happened in our culture today, as all of you know. The topsoil is completely eroded. Farmers are not farming like they used to. They expect to get the same yield or crop, and it's just not happening. So here I am, a sickly boy, growing up in Ireland, loving sports, good at sports, lacking some confidence, but good at sports, but always sick and always at the doctor. And then other kids, there was a handful that were sick growing up with me, but very few were sick as I was. I just seemed to be like a thin, weak, miserable kid, a bit like Tom Brady. You know how he turned out. He's very good in the week too, but he's won five Super Bowls, like him or dislike him. So I was kind of that kind of guy, good at sports, but very weak. And, and I thought to myself, wow, why am I always sick? And I started to read. I started to study. I started to learn. And then I met someone who was an herbalist, and they told me about studying herbal remedies and how they were really important at healing the body because cycle of the mind makes some of the body sick. And then someone told me, did you know? <laughs> Did you know that green foods are the most abundant superfoods in the world? Now, I didn't know that. Did you know that green foods are... Let me get a sip of water. Hold on. <laughs> I drank my greens. <laughs> He's choking on his greens. He's drinking a lot of greens. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, please type them in the chat box. Mary Ellen's going to monitor those, and we'll make sure that uh, we try to get to those um, while he's on the line with us. I have a few already that we're going to ask him when he's done giving his little talk. I have one to add to that, Teresa. It's uh, just that everyone nowadays is taking greens, so why should we take fruits? I'm sure he'll answer that when he's about that. <laughs> I've never okay. had to stop a call because I had too many greens piled into my little <laughs> window. All at one time. Plus, I have a house full of guests. So I learned, I learned at a very young age that if we took care of ourselves, um, we would have a better quality of life. And then I started to study about the longest lived people in the world because I'm a ferocious reader and I've written a lot of books, as you know, 15, 15 books, 16 books now. And I met this herbalist from England and he told me that green foods are the highest on the DNA chain. I didn't understand that. Green foods are loaded with chlorophyll. He told me that and I said, what's that? He said, well, chlorophyll is the blood of plants with almost an identical molecular structure as hemoglobin, the blood of human beings. I was hooked. The first time I drank a green superfood, it was like Irish pond water. It was like Bailey's with greens loaded in on top. <clears throat> My body responded, Teresa, in a way that I can barely describe. I knew 
that was the missing link. I knew I wasn't getting the nutrients as most of us, even today in North America, are not getting the vital nutrients that are necessary in order for us to have abundant health because our topsoil is eroded of vital nutrients. The farmers are not farming anymore. There's too many subsidies which is preventing them from farming. Topsoil is eroded. There's no vital nutrients in the soil. So we're actually eating food that has no or little nutritional value whatsoever. For example, if you look at the produce that you find in most grocery stores all across our country, they are transported tens of thousands of miles from either China, Japan, South America. They're in trucks that are poorly refrigerated. And I say this respectfully because I love farmers and being a farm boy. They only reach our soil. And then when they're transported in big, these big, huge containers for days all across our country in extreme temperature, whether it's extreme heat or extreme cold, it gets to the stores. They then polish them, wax them, and clean them and put them up on the shelf with lights on them. There's no nutrients in there. The nutrients are all completely devoid. Hence the reason why we must supplement. Here's also what I discovered. The Hunzas are some of the longest lived people in the world. I've had the opportunity to meet some of the longest lived people in the world. They're not on ding dongs, they're not on big gulps, they're not on, um, they're not on genetically modified food, they're not on burgers or fries, they're not on big gulps, they're not on all these big food, or burgers and, and pies and all this stuff that make them sick. They live off Mother Earth. They know that the further away we get from Mother Nature, the sicker we become. And the closer we stay to Mother Earth, the healthier we become. And I understood that. So when I drank my first glass of greens, like I have right here, <laughs> it's really con this is really concentrated. Yeah. Um, I knew, I knew, I knew this was it. I knew then. And then what I did was I went on a quest as a young man around the world to find out what were the longest lived people in the world? What were they eating? What were they consuming? I knew what the sick people, because I was a sickly kid. My late mother was sick. My late father was sick. My brother-in-law was sick. My fiance died of cancer. I knew, I knew all this stuff and I didn't want to end up like that. I wanted to change my destiny and in so doing, change the destiny of tens of thousands of people. This is my legacy. That's why I write the books. I do calls like this. I do ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox News. That's why I do what I do because I want to help people have a better understanding of how powerful red and green superfoods are for the human body. Here's why. Research indicates and this is from the Tufts University in Boston and also from the United States Department of Agriculture. In cultures, in countries that consume the most amount of dark leafy greens and colored superfoods, they have less degenerative disease. We make no claims about any of our products on any of these calls, as you know, guys. And so what we do know that these green foods mop up free radicals from the air we breathe, the food we eat, and the water that we drink because we live in a very toxic environment. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to develop this magnificent superfood, which we call isofruits and isogreens. So I went around the world asking all these longest lived people, what do you eat? What do you eat? What do you eat? And they told me, I eat this, I eat this, I eat this, I eat this. And that's why I put it in our formula. So I took the guesswork out of it for you guys. I mean, it's quite remarkable that if you were to go around the world to 30 different countries, and I've traveled all over the world, and I love going to the rainforest because I want to understand what the Hunzas and the Vilkaba Indians and the Azerbaijanis and the Titicacas, what are they living on? They're living on love. They're living on spirituality, great connection to family. Um, they have a great connection to Mother Earth. They respect Mother Earth. They respect the sun, the moon, and the stars. Most of us don't give a hoot. You know, we just get up and do our thing and don't honor the sun and don't honor the moon. They do that. That's a ritual for them. And it's really, really powerful to watch and to witness and observe how they honor Mother Earth. We, as farmers, also honor Mother Earth, but most of us just go into a restaurant, we get our food, we never think where it comes from, how it was harvested, how it was harvested. <clears throat> what did it take to prepare that food? So we know this, that green foods are the highest on the DNA chain, as I mentioned. Green foods have that chlorophyll-rich content. Scripture says, you know, I've given you every seed bearing herb there is. Do not look to the skies for the answers to your health. Look under your own two feet and be careful how you chew the humble grass for it does not have teeth like the beast. They were talking about green superfoods because green superfoods are chock full of vital nutrients. It's like taking a warm, hot, soothing bath for the inside of your cells. So it deodorizes, it cleanses, it rejuvenates, it replenishes, it balances not only pH levels, but also balances from a physiological, biological, etiological uh, point of view. All of your meridians, top of your head to bottom of your toes and everywhere in between. It also has the remarkable, this is not just me talking, this is science, this is, this is Mother Nature. 
we as human beings are in violation of Mother Nature every single day. We do. We violate Mother Nature everywhere we go. We dump, we pollute, we have more environmental toxins in our air than ever before. When we put green and red superfoods into our body, they have the remarkable innate intelligence. Yes, plants have remarkable intelligence, plant life, to go to various parts of the body where it's needed to bring about homeostasis and balance. That's the remarkable thing about these green food, superfoods and red superfoods. So I've selected all these remarkable foods historically that have been used for thousands of years based on historical use around the world. Why would I want to change anything? If I know that the Hunsas and the Vilcom Indians and Azerbaijanis and the Titicacans, the longest lived people in the world, do green tea. When we look at the Shizoku region of Japan, they drink 30 cups of green tea a day, yet there's no degenerative disease, meaning there's no cancer. Wouldn't I want to include that in a superfood? Right. When I look at European bilberry, first isolated during the First and Second World War, back in England, they found that Royal Air Force pilots who took bilberry jam increased their night vision dramatically. Wouldn't I want to include that in the product? So all of the herbs that are in our isofruits and isogreens, I've been researching for 25 years, 30 years. Ever since I was a young man, 20 years old, I was seeking answers. The scripture says, whatever you are seeking is also seeking you. That's awesome. It's so great that like you've been able to formulate that and put it all together in something that we can take. So, you know, I know that people say all the time that our greens, like one scoop of it is equal to nine organic salads. Is that pretty yeah, close or is that, that accurate? Seven to nine servings of greens or salads per serving. Because what we're doing, Teresa, is we're concentrating 10,000 milligrams of all of these superfoods together, cold processed, meaning no heat is ever used. We don't use any pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides. Quality control is off the charts at Isogenics. Yeah. We do third-party testing. We don't want to put something in a bottle that you, your child, your sister, your mom, your grandma, your grandpa would take that would affect them or hurt them. So we put really quality products uh, into our bottles, into our formulas. We spend oodles and hours of science and time formulating products that impact human life. And, you know, I feel so blessed to do this call with you and everybody else on the call because here I am, a guy from Ireland, not knowing anybody, I get emotional talking about it, formulating a product that impacts human life because I lost my father, my mother, my brother-in-law, uncle, cousin, fiance, and I was scared, Teresa. I was scared. When you're scared, you got to get off your butt and do something. And I had the education and I had some of the knowledge and I've gained some more since I had that wherewithal and that blessing from the higher power of God, whatever you want to call it, spirit. I had the innate intelligence come to me and I wrote that formula down in the middle of the night. I woke up and I got that formula. It came to me. I wanted to do something about impacting the lives of our fellow man and woman. That's so awesome. And, and as and I look I, at the picture, yeah, I see Mother Teresa here is, is in the background, a photograph of her. And I've written a book about her, as you know, Heart of a Servant. She had this innate intelligence come to her too. I must do something with my life. And all of us, all of us on this call, all of us, no matter who you are, must have something remarkable to do with your life because we get to pass this way but once. We must do something magnificent, something greater than who you are physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. You must rise above it despite the hardships and, and, and hurdles that we come uh, in contact with on a daily basis, whether it's the children getting sick or, or a car breaking down or a flat tire or bills to pay. We must become so much more than what we are. And I was driven, Teresa, to create these products. I've developed over a couple of hundred products now. I was, I was innately, divinely inspired and guided by the Holy Spirit to create products that changes how we feel, how we react, and how we live our lives in, in the context of love and joy. And that's why I do what I do. You know, that's, it's great that you say that because our team, we focus a lot on how we can help as many people as possible. And we talk about that as a team and how much we love that Isogenics allows us to do that. It allows us to help people heal and get healthy and feel better and live their life. And I will tell you, it's made a huge difference for me. I don't go one day without greens. And I know you have how many servings a day? I Six. go through two canisters a week. I drink right. it all the time, morning, noon, and night. I actually, I was, uh, I worked out at the gym earlier today, and then I have like four or five guests in my house. I didn't really get a chance to grab my, I grabbed some greens this morning, but I didn't get a chance to grab them again. So I wolfed them down really fast. That's why I was coughing. I was, that, 
I put it into a really big thick scoops into my glass of water, but I didn't add enough water, so I was rushing. Oh no! <laughs> and and are the greens safe for kids of all ages? And the fruits? That's a really good question. We at Isogenics always err on the side of caution, as you right. as fans, all of us should do. We do know, and this is interesting, when I was going through grad school, and I'll make this uh, as brief as possible and also uh, as uh, informative as I can. When I was going through grad school, we found that in cultures and also in colleges and ca college campuses around America, North America, around the world, they fed one group of kids ding-dongs and donuts and sticky cars, really sugary drinks. They performed abysmally disaster. They fed the kids fresh fruits and vegetables and protein, greens. They performed remarkably. Their test scores were off the charts. So we at Isogenics, as I mentioned momentarily, like to err on the side of caution. You can give your child a little, a little tiny taste. It's not going to harm them. You can give them a quarter of an ounce. You can give them an ounce if it's a little baby. Um, we recommend that you wait at least to your six or seven years old. But most kids are so active. They're playing sports. They're on computers. Technology has taken over our household these days. I mean, this technology, look at what we're doing right now. We couldn't do this a few years ago. It's quite right. remarkable. People can tune in from all over the country, all over the world. So if you make a smoothie, throw your greens and your fruits in with your, you know, your, um, your protein shakes, one more energy, whatever it is that you're using, and um, give them a little sip of it, and you will see dramatically, we've been able to prove this at Harvard University and Stanford University, in countries and cultures and families that are given the right nutri nutrients, they perform better academically, physically, mentally, emotionally, on all levels. Their ADD levels are completely, uh, significantly reduced, and, their, and their, their level of mental acuity and focus is dramatically increased. I, as an athlete, I'm a world champion Taekwondo martial artist. I don't tell a lot of people that, but it's on my website, as you no. know. And uh, I have a school in Santa Monica, and I'm 58, and I have 17-year-olds that just can't even compete. They can't even do anything near what I can do because of my conditioning and also because of how I eat, what I eat, how I exercise, and how I show up in the world. Here's an interesting thing, and this is something remarkable. One of my idols is Dr. Martin Luther King, the great Dr. Martin Luther King. He said that everybody can be great because anybody can serve, and you don't have to see the whole staircase. You just got to see the first step. Right. And I think a lot of us are like that today, tonight. Um, many of us are thinking, wow, it's interesting what Tony just said, because I came to this country, America, the greatest country in the world, for opportunities. Right. I came here so that I could help my family. And I had a compelling why that was so huge, so big, that, that it was leading me divinely, re religiously, beautifully, compassionately, lovingly in a direction towards helping create magnificent foods that would leave a legacy in the lives of our brothers and sisters. Just like what you said, you help everybody. And that's the divine, godly principles that are written about in Scripture. It says in scripture, to them that hath shall more be given, to them that hath not shall be taken away. I've given you every seed bearing herb there is. Do not look to the skies for the answers to your health. Look under your own two feet and be careful how you chew the humble grass, for it does not have teeth like the beast. They weren't talking about the pizza and the Pepsi, Prozac, Ding Dongs, Donuts, and Big Gulps, marijuana, and all these types of things. They were talking about live whole foods. And this is why I'm so thankful to Isogenics and to John Anderson in particular and Jim and Kathy. They saw the vision when I brought these products. These were plant-based nutrients that the company never had, probably were not aware of, because things have changed. Everything is plant-based foods. I had that experience as a young man being very sick. Medicine wasn't helping me. It was giving me nightmares where I would get up out of my bed, folks, and run out of the house because of the nightmares that I was having from the medication that I was taking because I was always sick. And I knew that was wrong. I just knew that was bad, bad, bad medicine. Yeah. And I had to heal myself, and I was seeking the answers. And this is why we have these remarkable products at Isogenics, hence the reason why I developed the fruits and greens and the countless other products that I've been working on over the years. Well, we are very grateful for that. And you, you were mentioning um, your athletic stuff, and we did have a question to, about how the greens can help improve athletic performance, if that has any bearing on that. Well, absolutely. Well, here's what happens. When you eat pizza, Pepsi, Prozac, or you drink soda pop, well, what it does is it actually creates dysbiosis or acidosis in the body, meaning it slows down your energy reservoir, your energy resources. You also have to expend a significant amount of energy in order to break your food down, right? We all know that. Lots and lots of energy. The late Dr. Bernard Jensen said, 
if you have to expend a lot of energy breaking down your food, you're eating the wrong food. And so with our greens and with our fruits, we don't heat anything. When you heat anything over 110, 115 degrees Fahrenheit, you destroy enzymatic activity and consequently the future life of the plant. So the greens and fruits are in what's called a bioavailable state, meaning it's a synergistic blend of the right ratio of the right nutrients put together 10,000 milligrams of greens roughly, 10,000 milligrams roughly of our fruits. They're in a pre-digestible state, Teresa, so that when you take them, it gets in the bloodstream instantly, giving you that burst of energy that you need for athletic performance. And as a master in Taekwondo, and it's really tough. It's a really tough sport. It's really, really tough. It's, most young people cannot keep up with the type of training and conditioning that I have done over the years. It looks, my sister came to the dojo and she says to me, she said, I was dizzy watching you do your routines and do your performances and do your jump ropes because 3,000 jump ropes is the warm up. I mean, it's, it's pretty hard. You won't be able to do that the first time you start for sure. So you condition your body. I'm not expecting people to go do martial arts and, and, and do all those things, but what I have found is that a great racehorse is always fed top of the line food. A great car, and I watch Formula One all the time because I love Formula One coming from England, the Grand Prix, and the different um, races and, and sports, and the NFL, of course, as well, and rugby, and watch all that soccer and stuff. The great athletes of the world, the Usain Bolts of the world, Michael Phelps, who's a friend of mine, he's the greatest Olympian ever. Michael told me that when he was, when he was competing, at times, he did bad food, and he could tell that his times were not as good. When he got a nutritionist on board, he started to eat the really good food, hence the reason why he's the greatest Olympian of all times. Tom Brady is 40 years young, playing in the Super Bowl, going for possibly his eighth Super Bowl, 1-5. Tom Brady looks like a kid. He looks unbelievable. He attributes all his success, obviously, to mental acuity and strength and endurance and perseverance and enthusiasm. But the more, number one thing he says is green superfoods. Fact, he eats chlorophyll rich superfoods as indeed does his lovely wife, Giselle Bunsen. Yeah. My neighbor was a former patriot, Andre Carter. He also lives on green superfoods. We know that the remarkable energy that's garnered from green foods, why? Because we're able to harness the, I'm looking out at the hills here of Malibu here, I wish you could see it, it's just amazing. Come with me, it's so amazing. The sun is shining down on, on, um, on the mountains. So green foods are, they harness, the sunshine harness the energy of the plants, so the plants harness the energy of the sunshine, and it creates what's called photosynthesis or liquid chlorophyll. That's where the energy comes from. So when you take that into your body, boom, you are just full of energy, full of life, full of the goodness, plus it's deodorizing, it's cleansing, it's rejuvenating. As I said, it's like taking a warm, hot shower for the inside of your cells, so it's going to work. It's in a pre-digestible state. This is really important. So there's no energy required to break it down. Hence the reason why you have so much more energy. It balances blood sugar levels in your body. It oxygenates the blood. And this is the most important thing I'll say tonight. The Nobel Prize was won for this in 1939, 1941, proving that bacteria and viruses, and again, folks, we make no claims, but this was, a, this was the Nobel Prize was won for this. Bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an oxygen-rich environment. Well, our green foods oxygenate the blood. They change the pH levels of the body from acid to alkalinity. The pH scale goes from 0 to 14, 7.0 being neutral, anything above 7.0 being alkaline, anything below 7.0 being acid. Acid body creates dysbiosis, degenerative disease. An alkaline body creates homeostasis and balance and overall good health. Yeah, and, and we have actually talked about that in our product page as well. Um, and we, you know, encourage people to concentrate on getting your body in an alkaline state because that is so important for your health. And, you know, I know most of us feel like we're aging in reverse, that we're looking younger. I mean, I just turned 51, so I feel better now than I did in my 20s, and I have more energy. I can see your, your skin through this call and your smile. It's absolutely, I get the same thing too. People tell me all the time, you look like you're 25, you're 30 years old. I told someone today that I'm 58 years young at Pilates class. She says, no way. You look like you're 30 years old. Everybody at Isogenics looks magnificent because I know. Right things. We're cleansing. We're detoxing. We're the same age, doctor. Today's my birthday. We're the Yay. same age. We're in 1959. Happy birthday, Angel. So, yeah. So, we're vibrant. We're alive. We're energetic. We're making a difference. We're, oh, yeah. we're doing good things for humanity. Hence the reason why we're not really aging at all. Exactly. And you, you mentioned cleansing. So 
I know that there's a list of things you can and can't have on cleanse days. What about greens and fruits on cleanse days? Oh, without question. I'm so glad you brought that up. There are different schools of thought at corporate on whether we should take the greens or the fruits on cleanse days. And I say yes, because I'm the formulator and I'll tell you why. Here's <laughs> why. And you guys, you guys write this down if you wish to. When we are cleansing, what we are doing biologically, physiologically, I used that word twice tonight already, biologically and physiologically, we're changing the energy patterns and the consciousness of our whole physiology, meaning we're slowing down our digestive system, giving it a rest, so it's not using as much energy as it would normally need to fuel our bodies to keep us functioning effectively. Right. So when you have a caloric restriction, here's what happens. Heat levels in the body come down, which means that the basal metabolic rate, the rate at which we burn food for fuel, don't you just love this? I just love doing these calls. So the basal metabolic rate, the rate at which we burn food for fuel as a source of energy, starts to slow down. What greens and fruits do, they actually raise the body temperature. This is why you burn calories. This is why you get lean. This is why it makes your nine day and your 30 day work much more effectively because when the body is given the message, Teresa, that I'm not getting my salad today, I'm not getting my potatoes, I'm not getting my chicken, I'm not getting my fish, I'm not getting whatever, I'm not getting my pizza, I'm not getting my chocolate, I'm not getting my soda, I'm not getting my juice, I'm not getting my coffee or my donut or my bagel, it goes into a slight panic mode, meaning that blood sugar levels drop significantly, our brains run on glucose, not Dunkin' Donuts, runs on glucose. Mm -hmm. And so glucose is really, really important as it relates to food consumption and how that food consumption comes in and how it's broken down as part of what we call the Krebs cycle. Not complicated, but it's just a cycle how food is broken down in the body. So if we feed it fruits and greens, it complements your existing nine day, 30 day, 30 calories per serving, no fat, no cholesterol. You will sail through your nine day and 30 day like, what? I was on a nine day cleanse? Really? I was on a 30 day cleanse? Really? Once I started implementing that, in people's uh, diet and in their health program uh, with isogenics, their cleanse works so magnificently because many of you are mothers. You have children. You have to run here and there and everywhere. Many of you are working outside the home and many of you are working at home. So if you have to run around and you're actually depleting caloric intake, you're going to feel a little tired, a little lethargic, depending, of course, on your level of activity and how much, how much brain function you are using or lack thereof or how much weight you need to drop or release over a three, four, two, three, four months period of time. So the greens gives you a boost. It's like putting your foot to the pedal and all of a sudden it just goes a little further and goes a little further. It's like running in a race. You just want them to win. Or it's like a guy throwing the ball for a touchdown. You want them to catch it like so badly, especially if it's your team, you want them to catch it in, 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 the, in the baddest way possible and you're just hoping that it lands on his arms and you can catch it and you just go, yeah, you feel so euphoric. Well, that's what the greens and fruits do. It makes you feel euphoric because it's fueling the blood, blood sugar levels without spiking insulin. Hence the reason why when you're on a cleanse day, particularly if you're a diabetic, one or two, or you have challenges with being diabetic, or you consume too many carbs, which most of us do because we have too much darn food in America. So the greens and the fruits will balance blood sugar levels, will not spike insulin levels, and keep your nine day and your 30 day working so effectively, you'll actually drop more weight, you'll be able to get through the program much more effectively without craving and eating everything in the house and the fridge. Yeah, because I, I know one of the things we talk about is how important it is what your body absorbs versus what you eat. And the great thing about isogenics is because the enzymes are in there, because nothing is heat processed, our bodies are actually absorbing more of that nutrition. That's cold processed. Right. So that's, that's, I think that's one of the keys to why isogenics works so well. And one of the things I love most about it is because I feel like I'm actually getting way more nutrition because I do not eat a lot of green food. So thank God that you made the greens because I don't really like most vegetables, but I love the greens and I put them in my shake. I have them in an afternoon, like a shaker cup with some little bit of orange hydrate and some ice and water. 
they're delicious. And people get nervous about the greens, the taste. And I tell them, no, this stuff tastes good. It's like got a fruit flavor too, because there are some fruits in the green product, right? Right, and anything that is good, freezer is generally not good for you. Our greens taste good and it's actually good for you. If, I was doing a comparison the other day, if we were to buy every ingredient that's in our greens, over 30 ingredients, 10,000 milligrams, it would cost you about $600 in any health food store. That's the fact. We were able to put that all together in a powder form, powder form, concentrated, dehydrated, no heat use whatsoever. You take that into your body, I mean, you are jammed up, you are fired up. I have a gentleman right now, he's almost 80 years old. He's riding his bicycle as part of a team, or a team of riders. They're all octogenarians. Some of them are riding their bicycles from Florida. He's riding his bicycle from Albuquerque, New Mexico, back to California, raising funds for prostate cancer. He has ridden from Florida multiple times. He's a patient and a client of mine. He uses the greens exclusively. He has it on his bicycle all the time. He used the fruits as well, mixed up with water, boom, knocks it in. He's ready to go. 65 miles a day, they're covering these octogenarians. Can you believe that? It's amazing. And they're riding against 35 mile an hour winds. Remember, they're riding from East Coast to West Coast. It's unbelievable. That's crazy. It's absolutely. They take, he took the train to Albuquerque to ride back. The other ones, they actually flew out there, had their bicycles sent out there, and then ride back again. They do this all the time, a couple of times a year. I'm just so inspired by these young octogenarians because they're full of life and full of energy. Here's what I've learned from my mentor, Brian Tracy, a great man. He said, Tony, a horse that runs in a race that comes in first is not 100 times better than the horse that comes in second. It's only a nose better, but the translation in financial terms and the translation in nutrition and health is tenfold, can be a hundredfold because of what he or she eats. A great car is given proper octane, is given the proper fuel in order for it to maximize, maximize full potential in a race. A great soccer player, a great basketball player, a great football player, NFL football player like the Tom Brady's of the world, the Aaron Rodgers of the world, where all these guys are so into their health and taking care of themselves because they want to have maximum performance. Brady wants to play for another five, 10 years. Guy's going to be 45, 50 years old. He's amazing. Aaron Rodgers wants to do the same. All these, all these athletes now are growing younger gracefully by the nutrients. If they were eating ding-dongs and burgers and fries and pizza, how could they perform? They just yeah. can't. I can see it. When I watch games on a Sunday, I watch it. Obviously, I enjoy football. I watch the players, and I watch the ones with the agility and the grace, and I watch the ones that have too many carbs, and they can't move, and they get hit all the time. Right. Well, What's we the- actually have two people on the call right now that are – like major long distance cyclist. So Brent is at an event right now. Brent, can you pop on really fast? He's got, he's sampling greens at his event and he Ooh. just showed it on the screen a minute ago, um, but it's for runners. And then we have Marco, who's also um, a cyclist and he's recovering from a bad accident last year. And I know that this nutrition has been key in his recovery. Um, okay. um, so yeah, we've, we've seen it work with people on our own team because they use it all the time. And Brent's part of team Isogenics. There you are. Hey, Brent. You say hi. Hey, it's kind of loud here. I, uh, we're actually at an event. I was showing Teresa, uh, doctor that we actually have the greens that we were sampling them out alongside the hydrate. So it's the first time we'd done that. It had a pretty good reception of it. So, uh, thanks for that. Thank you, Brenda. Awesome. I appreciate it very much. And I also, I'm also a cyclist. I've been cycling pretty much all my life back in my native Ireland and here in the United States. And I can tell when I go, when I go on these rides, as you probably know better than I, Brent, if you're not giving the body the right nutrients, you just, you just can't, you just can't perform. You can't, you can't maximize full potential. You're going to have to stop and you're going to have to get something to eat or get a shake. But with, with the, when you add our protein or fruits and our greens, and you drink them with water, boom. Yeah, we, we do have another question, Dr. Tony. Um, somebody's asking, what gives you the sweetness in the greens? What makes it sweet? Well, he, that's interesting. If you were to go to your local produce store or, or uh, your local grocery store or your local Whole Foods or whatever it is you, you're at in your neck of the woods, and you were to grind up all your fruits, it would be naturally sweet. We dehydrate it. We take all the sugar out. So what you're left with is a natural sweet taste. So with greens, and here's the interesting thing. The Chinese believe that the more, and Chinese have tremendous longevity, some of the longest lived people in the world, they really know about nutrition, they really know about herbs, uh, especially the the Japanese culture and the Chinese uh, dynasty. They believe in bitters, bitter herbs, just drinking those bitter herbs. I have, I wish I could show you in my home, I have a big Chinese cooker 
And I throw herbs in there all the time because many of my patients come to my home, they come to my office literally five minutes away, and I boil herbs for them to help them get well because that's what I'm traditionally trained in is raw herbs out in the middle of the forest, out in the middle of the trees, collecting them. The Chinese look after their, their trees and their herb farms like their children, newborn children. It's just, they just so honor. I wish you could see this. They just honor it so much. It's such a blessing to witness. So uh, our greens have a lot of bitter herbs in there, and that's remarkable. But we know in our culture, we love things that taste good. And so, you know, if it doesn't taste good, you guys, oh, I can't stand the taste. I don't like the taste. Oh, my God. But we don't understand that it's really good for you. In Chinatown and in China, if you were really sick, they would give you herbs that don't take like a milkshake, don't taste like a milkshake for sure because that causes dysbiosis and acidosis and sickness. They give you raw herbs that are cooked in a, in, in a cooking pot, Chinese cooking pot. They strain it, and then you drink it, and it doesn't taste, I'll tell you, like a latte for sure. So our herbs, we have better herbs in our greens. Not that many, but a handful. It would be almost impossible for people to drink it in our culture. Everybody's culture is different. So to answer that question, so... We have a little bit of a sweet taste in our greens simply because we want it to be palatable. It's already, a, it's already in a pre-digestive state, meaning that's absorbed into the bloodstream right away. Hence, so if you put apples and oranges and peaches and pears and strawberries and blueberries and blackberries and bilberries and acai and goji berries and mangosteen and all these remarkable herbs, they're all sweet naturally. So they're, they're cold processed, dehydrated, no heat ever used. And they're naturally sweet. For example, if you ate goji berries, they're naturally sweet. If you ate amala, vitamin C, it's naturally sweet. So that's why we have a little sweet taste when it comes to our greens. And with our fruits, it's the same thing because you can't control really um, the sweetness of it. Because if you take apples and oranges and peaches and pears and strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, grind them all up, dehydrate them, cold process, you're going to have a natural sweet taste, just like coconut. So that's what we have in our fruits and greens. But they do not spike insulin levels less than one gram of sugar, no fat, no cholesterol, only 30 calories per serving. So off the charts, amazing. And if you are a diabetic, as I said earlier, really important, drink yours with water. Yeah, and that's that's something that we get the, that question a lot about the sugar content in things for diabetics. So thank you for addressing that because I know that most of our products have very low sugars and they're all very low glycemic and they're all made with natural fruit sugars, right? So white table sugar. And also, if you're concerned about being a diabetic, add some cinnamon. It'll reduce your, your insulin levels so your insulin levels won't spike. Yeah. That is good to know. And then um, you, we've talked a lot about the greens, and I, I love, love, love the greens. But what is the benefits of the red fruits? So I know that it's good to have all that stuff, but can you address that a little bit? Sure. And this is why I, I formulated the fruits in the, in, in the first place. All of my products that I have formulated, the 200 or so that I have formulated, were formulated for a specific reason based on feedback, based on, on uh, patients coming to my office and asking me, Dr. Tony, I've got this problem, I've got this problem, I've got this problem. And so I wanted to address it and I started to think. And then one day I'm watching the news, I think it was ABC or NBC News, and it said, two ounces of pomegranate, historically, as you know, been around for thousands of years, given as a present in Iran, Iraq, to newlyweds, so they have creation, they can procreate and have lots and lots of children. And written about in, the, in Scripture, in the Bible, I thought to myself, why isn't people telling people about these superfoods? And then I read a study, then I read a study at, um, from Tufts University in Boston that said that color is crucial in the fight against degenerative disease. Dr. Lansky and Dr. Newman wrote a huge amount of papers, about 27 or 30 papers, on the power of pomegranate. Pomegranate has elagic acid. Elagic acid is a natural compound that goes in and mops up free radicals from the air we breathe, the food that we eat, and the water that we drink, because we all rust on the inside. We all suffer from oxidative stress. So here's the interesting fact. When I was doing the research for the formula, I found that 86% of the people in North America eat no fruits and vegetables at all. Wow. Hard to and according to the World Health Organization, that's quite remarkable, isn't it, Teresa? It's hard to believe. Yeah. French fry is not a French fry is a vegetable, but it's saturated and lacerated and burned with oil. I mean, 600 degrees these ovens. I mean, we're we're creating so much uh, oxidative stress and so much free radical damage for our arteries. It's incredible what we do. This is the first generation where children will die before their parents. Time magazine four years ago. 
That well, is a scary statistic. I've heard well, that before. Well, yeah, exactly. So, 86 percent of the U.S. population donated to fresh fruits and vegetables. I thought, well, let, let me create something. So, I again looked at the longest-lived people in the world. They live off Mother Nature. They reach for the plants. They honor the trees. They get a pear. They get an apple. They get an orange loaded with vitamin C. It's naturally occurring. It's not sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, insecticides. It's not genetically modified, which is I want to use a bad word, but I won't. Yeah. It is so bad. It's incredible what is going on in our culture. There's more fiber now in the box than there is in the product. If you pick something up, everything's packaged and boxed, and you pick it up, and everybody's running, and people don't have the time for a meal. It is incredible what has happened to our culture. I've seen this happen to this great country we call America in the last 20 years, ever since I moved from Ireland. And I remember I have family members who were sick back home. I've healed them all from taking care of even my pets. I've healed them all from taking really good nutrients. So yeah. So Tufts University says in Boston that color foods are crucial at protecting us against free radical damage. So our greens and fruits are sister products meant to be taken together. 10,000 milligrams of greens and 10,000 milligrams of fruits. And here's the interesting thing. The longest lived woman in the world just died a week ago from Pakistan. She, was, she moved from Pakistan to England. She said she attributes her good health to eating lots of greens and lots of veggies. Why? There's chlorophyll rich content in these green foods. There's what's called proanthocyanidin. There's anthocyanidins. There's vitamin C. There's grapeseed extract. There's chlorophyll. There's sulforaphane. There's phytonutrients. There's all of these antioxidants, and they're like Pac Man. They go along and they mop up all the dangerous free radicals that we are exposed to on a daily basis, particularly if you smoke cigarettes and your diet is not conducive to one of being healthy. And they go, kids don't eat any vegetables, hence the reason why their test scores are a disaster in school. Kids don't know who the president is, the vice president is, don't know where Asia is, don't know where Ireland is, don't know how people fly, don't know how people get around. Because they're not able to concentrate because they're putting foods into their body that is conducive to a decline in mental acuity, and it's so unfair. And if you see what's in schools these days, guess what's in there? Um, vending machines that people can put a dollar into and throw you out a Twix bar or throw you out a sandwich that's been in there for days and days that's dry, that is enriched with white flour, that is possibly genetically modified or has some ingredient that's genetically modified. We wonder why our kids are overweight. We wonder why diabetes is skyrocketing 600% according to the World Health Organization in the last 12 years. We wonder why we have a problem, why our kids are not exercising why they can't pass their school exams. I mean, they don't, have, they don't have the energy to exercise because they're not getting enough nutrition. And I see it every day because we have a lot of kids that are in school that come here and I can see it every day. They don't get a good breakfast. Their brains aren't functioning. They're tired. I mean, I, the, all the people that work for me are in their 20s and they literally cannot put in the day that I put in. They're exhausted. And it's because yeah. they're not getting the nutrition. And I try to get them nutrition, but... Um, it's it's so important that we get all those antioxidants in because we're ex exposed to so much bad stuff and toxic stuff in the environment. And I love that our products help try to get all that out of our body. So, yeah, um, so, so, in so, Wisconsin, they have a, um, they're beginning to put that right in the um, education program uh, planning for the little children that. Um, a, a kindergartner, he must have his protein at 9.15 because he's been at school for two hours. So they're beginning to realize that the children need appropriate nutrition in order to function properly. Absolutely. You're so right in saying that. I'm so glad you did that because we rank almost last in the world when it comes to our education because our children are really smart, but they're not getting the right nutrients. Plus, they're using a lot of uh, technology these days and, and, and uh, they're not communicating so they're not creating any sort of family environment where they can function effectively in the workplace. Test scores for kids in America have dropped 25 to 35 percent. I think that's the recent study. It's absolutely disastrous. It used to be really good when we didn't have this issue with GMOs and when we didn't have this issue with pesticides and herbicides and insecticides. We pumped about 50 billion, with a B, billion pounds of pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides in our food, in our water. I mean, wonder why our kids are sick. We wonder why their brain function is not functioning. We wonder why they have no mental acuity. We wonder why they're suffering from ADD, ADHD. We wonder why they're on copious amounts of medication. 15 to 19 year olds in New Zealand right now committing suicide at an unprecedented rate, the highest in the world because of different challenges, environmental toxins, pollutants, family environment, family dynamics, 
stuff that's going on in their country. And it's coming to this country as well. We write more prescriptions in America than the entire world combined. So hence the reason why if we wish to function effectively as human beings, as young children, if we wish to help our grandparents or grandma and grandpa, we need to feed them really good nutrition because it really plays a huge role, not only in longevity, but also from an academic standpoint. Yeah. And we, we have another question for you, Dr. Tony. Is it possible to consume too much of the greens or it, it can't hurt you no matter how much you have? No, you like said you could drink too much coffee and keep you up late at night. I know people that drink coffee, I mean, 10, 12 cups a day. Just It's like the Hunza's and the Vilcaba Indians and the Shizoku region of Japan. They drink 30 cups of green tea a day always sipping green tea in a big mug like this right here, drinking green tea all day long. And I drink green tea a lot as well, but not 30 cups a day because it's not part of my culture. It's not what I do. But you, you can never overdose on greens or ever overdose on fruits because they're fruits. They're just going to make you go to the restroom uh, a little more. And that's not a bad thing because here's the sad thing. Two million, two, yeah, it's a good thing. Two million men and women get colon cancer in the United States. 44% die. Why? Not getting the fiber. So there's lots of fiber in the greens, lots of fiber in the fruits. I take two canisters a week. Sometimes I go through more. I go, I go through it three or four times a day. I'm always making shakes. Um, as I said, I have a, a bunch of wonderful people here uh, at my home in Malibu right now as I speak. And we're always making shakes on a continuous basis. Blenders and Vitamixes are going nonstop at my house. I kid you not. That's They're, awesome. That's, I love it. And I feel so energized. And I... And I work out, I, I run the steps, I do Pilates, I do yoga, I do Taekwondo. I'm always moving and working and, and doing things, but I could not do it and could not have optimal health or well-being or energy if I did not consume copious amounts of greens and fruits and protein to stabilize and stay lean and stay fit. These are vegetarian arms, you can see. Right, nice. Yeah. So and I, you know, I, I heard you tell somebody um, at a celebration event about um, taking extra greens when you're flying on a plane. Can you talk about that? Because I know we have a lot of people that travel and, yeah. our, and our stewardesses are you know, flight attendants. So I, I heard you talk about that at one point and I thought that was an interesting thing. Well, here's what happens. The body is creating a significant, dramatic, excessive acid, acidosis, meaning dysregulation of their blood when they're flying because they're flying at 35,000 feet. Plus, 85% of people don't like to fly. They have tremendous amount of fear and tremendous amount of stress. So mm -hmm. when you have all this acid going on in your body, you're taking an hour or two to get to the airport. Most flights are four or five hours, depending, of course, where you're going. If you're flying to Europe, it's 10 and a half, 11 hours. If you're going, if you're going to the Far East, it's longer. If you go into Australia, it's 15, 16 hours. It's dramatic. So when you have significant acidosis or, or acid buildup in your body, the greens are remarkable not only for changing the pH of your body, but also making you feel relaxed, giving you a feeling, a sense of well-being, and also changing the pH of the blood from acid to alkalinity, so you're not always in a fight or flight mode on a continuous basis for a long period of time, depending, of course, on the length of your fight. Plus, it's a lot better than in, 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 in the airline food because most airline food is prepackaged, it's heated up in a microwave, and it's thrown to you and you got to eat it and leave it or lump it or uh, you drink your greens. And I don't eat airline food. I bring my own food with me and uh, I have my greens on every flight, everywhere I go. Yeah, I take shakes with me whenever I travel, always. I take shakes and greens and ionics always with me, anywhere I go. When I'm in the United States, I get a rental car and I just drive places and I bring my own little cooler bag with me and I bring my own food with me and I'll find a local Whole Foods or whatever when I'm in town. I'll find a vegan vegetarian restaurant. So I can always go and eat stuff or go to the local grocery store that's vegan, vegetarian, organic, buy what I need, have it in my hotel. I don't eat out a lot anymore because I don't particularly care for restaurants because I don't know what's in their food. And most of it, if it's not vegan, vegetarian, organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, wheat-free, I don't want it. Yeah. Um, let me see. Do we have any more questions, Mary Ellen? I know you had one on chlorophyll. I have a question. Yeah. Liz? Okay, go ahead, Liz. Um, okay, so my mom's been fighting breast cancer for two years, what, and, and I've got her taking the greens. Um, what, how much and what else do you recommend? Well, as I am not her doctor, and we want to make sure right. that we're being 100% uh, legal and not making any claims, um, there are things that uh, she can take, and you should take down my email 
all of you if you wish to and you could just email me off this uh, line and, and I'll be happy to respond to you and tell you some things but right off the bat uh, my email is doc tony doc Teresa has it doc tony 2014 at gmail.com are you in a plane you look like you're in a plane no she's at home <laughs> I can post it I'll post your email in our messenger group dr. Tony yeah, so that people so, have it Awesome. Appreciate that. Disease, we have to be very careful, but obviously sure. cleansing, detoxification, prayer, meditation, organic turmeric, essential fatty acids, ionic supreme, all of these things are important. And of course, work with your doctor because many doctors now are becoming very holistic and they're coming back dramatically on chemo and radiation because we know uh, that's mustard gas that was used in Vietnam during the war. So the body responds dramatically and remarkably to a plant-based diet, you get new cells every 16, well, certainly every 90 to 120 days. So we know we can turn things around with prayer and with the love of our family, forgiveness, mindfulness, and a new approach to health, particularly plant-based food. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mary Ellen, what was your question about the chlorophyll? Um, you know, I'm going to have to scroll back to find that, but um, I do have two that I wrote down here that people weren't um, – getting answered I think yet if you can scroll back while I'm asking these questions I'd appreciate that maybe Teresa sure. um, so dr. greens are sweet because why are greens we, we talked about that already I think I know we talked about that but like I came back like there wasn't a specific answer because personally I have had greens I've also had horses I don't like alfalfa our greens are delicious why well that's a good question. Well, I mentioned that and answered it earlier. We do have alfalfa, and I'm glad you mentioned alfalfa is sweet. So we have alfalfa in our product, and we also have uh, isolite in our product, which is John's proprietary blend. So it's got some silica in it, so it's naturally sweet. We also have blueberries, goji berries, mangosteen, acai, bilberries, amala, vitamin C. So it's naturally occurring, naturally sweet. For example, if you take an apple right now, dehydrate it, or just cut it up, it's going to be naturally sweet. If you get an orange cut it up it's going to be naturally sweet if you get blueberries and you eat a few of them it's going to be naturally sweet if they're dehydrated you get a banana you dry it it's going to be naturally sweet so that's what we have in our product plus we add into a lot of our um, formulas particularly those that are sourced from around the world mary ellen that are considered in the chinese culture bitters because the bitter herbs are the ones that actually go to work and do the work that actually start the healing process so with us in our culture we don't like things that are bitter we, we like uh, things that taste good, like milkshakes and <laughs> Donald's macchiatos and, or Starbucks macchiatos and all that kind of stuff. So we like things that taste really good. We're a sweet culture. We're a graceful, sweet culture. The Chinese don't like sweet stuff. They like things that are bitter. That's why they eat all the sauerkraut. That's why they eat all the stuff that they eat. This is all sour, pig's feet and all that snakes and all that craziness that they eat, all that sour stuff. They don't put... They don't put salt or pepper. We put salt and pepper on our stuff. We put ketchup. We put, I mean, go to a baseball game. What do you see? Ketchup, burgers, fries, wiener stencil. I mean, it's just unbelievable what people do. Popcorn. We, we're like we're like wildebeest when we come out of the stadium or out of the movie theater. We like things that taste good. And so hence the reason why we have the natural sweet tasting greens and the natural sweet tasting fruits because of um, the composition of the blend that's there. So there's 30 different herbs in the fruits. It's naturally sweet. They're all fruits. Right. The greens, the greens is naturally sweet because we, ha we add a little ionic alfalfa and a little ice of delight, which is naturally sweet tasting. That's good. Oh, and did yeah. you get an answer to that other question about, um, so everyone takes greens these days. Why should they take fruits? Did yes. we get an answer to that? Yeah, we did that. So you'll have to watch the recording. No, that's fine. Um, um, and then your chlorophyll well, question was thing. something about historically chlorophyll production process was unknown to man. Is there now an understanding of this process? Does that make any sense? Um, say that again, Teresa. The chlorophyll production process. Is there, do we have a better understanding now of how to produce chlorophyll, you yeah, know, say in the greens? Yeah, of course. You can buy liquid chlorophyll in the health store organic. The challenge with it is it's in a bottle. And it can be unstable because of the heat. I mean, I go to health food stores all the time in Arizona where it's 115 degrees and I can't believe it. They have stuff in the windows. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't want to drink that stuff because I don't know what the bottle is. I don't know if it's a type two recyclable bottle. I don't know if it's a bottle that has uh, polyethylene in it. Uh, 
water. It has some chemical composition, and I don't want that. But I don't want to be involved with plastic water. But yeah, there are tons of companies right now that are actually making liquid organic and non-organic liquid chlorophyll from harvesting the energy of the sunshine. It's basically plants dehydrated, all ground up, primarily green cereal grasses that provide like wheatgrass, barley grass, these types of green grasses provide a significant amount of chlorophyll. If they could give it like coconut water, they can give IVs of coconut water to hydrate and to bring people back and to make sure that they're well hydrated and bring them back from having a cardiovascular uh, uh, event. If they could give IVs of chlorophyll into the arm, they would do that. It's, it's quite remarkable, but they drink it. The only challenge with drinking liquid chlorophyll, it's green, which is remarkable but it leaves your tongue and your mouth all stained and that's going to, and your teeth all stained for a while. So you're not going to have as nice a smile as Teresa has right now, for sure. You're going to look like you were having a drink on St. Patty's Day. Awesome. Uh, but it's very good for you. But if you can drink it, then good for you. You're going to spend a lot of time washing your mouth and cleaning your teeth. Well, we know it's in the greens, so I'm just going to stick with the greens, personally. That's why our teeth are white and we look good. Right. Actually, doctor, that comes from the nerd side of me who remembers as a child, since you and I are close to the same age, I remember in science class where science at that time did not understand the process of how the plant exactly takes the sun's energy and creates chlorophyll. They did know at the time, however, how important chlorophyll was to the body. But look, it's taken us uh, well, I'll say we just did our 40th class reunion for my high school graduation. So, and still, you know, we're just beginning to really embrace the idea that chlorophyll, that's an important part of our daily intake and how important that is to us. Yeah, absolutely. For example, if you look at elephants, elephants have the strongest bones in the world. Strongest bones in the world. What are they living on? Plants. Chlorophyll, plants, plant-based food. They don't do dingoes or donuts. You throw a piece of meat in front of them, they ignore it, they won't even eat it. Even if they're starving, they will not eat it. A lion will eat it because that's what the lion is raised on. Very strong paleo, very strong instincts. Elephants, having the strongest bones in the world, are dependent on dark leafy greens for their nutrient-rich source of food. And hence the reason why their legs are so strong, their trunk is so strong, weighing some 25 to 30 tons, quite remarkable. They are dissected when they die, their uh, legs and their joints, and uh, doctors actually look at them and wondering, we're wondering, why? Why are, their, why are their legs so strong? Why is their trunk so strong? Why is their huge body? Why is it so big even though they're eating plants? It's because of the chlorophyll-rich content that's found in these plants that provide them, and hence uh, animals generally, generally, except in wet climates, generally do not get arthritis or foot rot. I grew up on a farm, so I know a lot about sheep and horses and cattle and donkeys and, and goats used to get a lot of foot rot because they were in the mountains and a very, very wet, harsh, rough terrain. But they generally do not get sick because of the high chlorophyll content. Feed them a grain-based diet and they get as sick as any animal you could ever imagine because most of the food that's fed to animals, as we all know, we're all smart people here, are, are leftover foods from carcasses that have been discarded or destroyed or did not meet the requirements of a quality control officer when he or she inspected the animal when the animal was deceased. It's, it's quite remarkable what is fed to our animals these days. We wonder why our animals have poor longevity, uh, poor mobility, uh, little or no strength, and they wonder why our kids are breaking bones like never before in the history of our culture. The hospitals are filled. I talk to pedi pediatricians. I have a national talk show with some of you know on Sundays nationwide, talkradionetwork.com. Click on the Listen Live button. You can hear my show. And the doctors are telling me they've never seen breaks like they have seen in young kids at such a tender age. And I said, what do you think that is? He said, it's definitely all down to the source of the food that they're eating, which is primarily ding-dongs, donuts, big dogs, like bread and burgers and fries and all this food that is so devoid of vital nutrients, hence the reason why people who eat a chlorophyll-rich diet, such as Usain Bolt, currently the fastest man in the world, he's a vegan, vegetarian. Thomas Edison was a vegan, vegetarian. Leonardo, DiCapri Leonardo da Vinci was a vegan, vegetarian. I think Leonardo DiCaprio is also a vegetarian, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but um, Speaking of that, Dr. Tony, we actually have a question about that. Marco, I'm gonna unmute you so you can ask your question. 
Marco was in a bad bicycle accident last year and broke how many nine bones and he is now back on his bike and was dancing up a storm at celebration so oh yeah uh thank you teresa so doctor my question is um um will elite athletes perform better if they are well fed um mindful about their diet um vegetarians yes uh, michael phelps as i mentioned not to be boastful is a friend of mine he lives in arizona so expecting his and baby with his lovely wife. He told me that he was doing 15,000 calories a day, but all the wrong food when he was competing. And then he realized his numbers could have been so much better had he been eating a plant-based vegan diet, which he has now uh, started to do. Many of the great athletes, and he's retired now, he may go back, he may change his mind after three months. I know many people that do the paleo diet, some do really well, other people do not do well. I, as a vegetarian, I'm not vegan. As a vegetarian, I don't need any meat, and I haven't had meat for 25 years. I feel better. I'm leaner. I'm fitter. I notice the difference in my skin, my hair, and my nails. When I initially started, I had to eat every two and a half to three hours to balance blood sugar levels. And so I keep my caloric content primarily all plant-based. I do a lot of shakes that provide me with significant energy. I still do mixed martial arts and Taekwondo. In fact, I'm the world champion at my age group in, in Taekwondo. And um, got that award like two years ago or so. And um, you can only do that if you are in excellent shape, you've conditioned your body, and if you eat the right foods. Uh, I see many of the kids that I compete with, they can't. They just don't have the energy because they're, they're pudgy. And they're putting all the wrong foods in their body, and that can be changed dramatically. So when you get the fastest man in the world being a vegetarian and you get some of the greatest athletes in our culture a vegetarian, there's a lot to be said for a vegan vegetarian or a certain vegetarian way of life. And then there's a ton of people that also eat a lot of meat and they do remarkably well. Everybody's body is unique and distinctly different. I grew up in my native Ireland. It was bacon, eggs, and sausages. Every day, morning, noon, and night, I was always sick. I was always sick. It didn't agree with me. Maybe I had a different immune system. I don't know. I guess I did. Many people told me I could not become a vegetarian. I became a vegetarian. I've never felt better. I've never felt better. I don't do wheat. I don't do gluten. I don't do GMO foods. I eat all plant-based every single day. And I feel unbelievable. I feel terrific, in fact. Clearer, better mental acuity. Leaner and fitter, better hair, skin, and nails. And I could see when I went back from my high school reunion that many of my friends who were not vegetarian, I didn't recognize them. They did not recognize me either because my body composition had changed dramatically and my hair was different. My overall sense of self was different. My outlook was different. I was lighter and leaner and fitter. You have to find out what works best for you. I just love sports. I love being active. Not everybody loves being active. Not everybody loves to cycle. Not everybody likes to do 58 steps in the morning or do 200 push-ups at a time. Not everybody likes to do mixed martial arts. Not everybody wants to do Taekwondo. Not everybody wants to cycle a bicycle 50, 60 miles a day. So I'm not one of those extreme guys. I live my life in balance, and most of my, my time is spent in prayer and meditation for those in need and eating mindfully and eating gracefully and eating blissfully and eating in gratitude. Thank you so much, Dr. That helps you, Marco. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tony. So we are at an hour, so I want to honor your time. I know you have guests, and I so appreciate you being on the call with us tonight. I really, really appreciate you giving up some time for us and, and informing us about the products because we all like to know as much as possible so that we can help as many people as possible. And you've been amazing. So thank you so you much. Guys. I'm here for you. I don't need to rush anywhere. The guests are being taken care of. I have someone taking care of them. I'm here for you guys. Awesome. Also, as you, as you know, and as you mentioned, Teresa, I've written 15 books on health. And um, the last book I just wrote, it was on Mother Teresa. I give all the money away to the ministry, Paul Hart of a Servant. I don't keep a dime for that book. You should get that. It's a really wonderful book, amazon.com, or you can go to my website. And then I have a book on how to think like a millionaire, how to act like a millionaire, how to become one. You need to read that book. If you want to take your life to the next level, you want to take your business to the next level, you said you own a coffee shop, you're aware of personal development, how important it is to you. If I wasn't studying personal development, I wouldn't be here tonight. I wouldn't be at Isogenics. That opportunity would never have come up for me. This is why the late, magnificent, beautiful angel, Dr. Wayne Dyer, who passed away a year ago or so, less than a year ago, he told me, listen to him on tape. I never met him. I wish I would have. I felt like I met him. He said, set your intentions for what it is that you want for your life. I set my intentions. My intentions was, or were, to meet a magnificent company 
that would align myself, that I would align myself with that would bring my products to the world. My products now are in 14 countries. So Isagenix is an unbelievable opportunity. There's no better opportunity in America than Isagenix because the products are magnificent, the management team is magnificent, you, the distributor, are magnificent because you help everybody. It doesn't matter whose team you're on, everybody at Isagenix. I've never met one person depressed at Isagenix at <laughs> any conference. It doesn't matter whether it's IC University, whether it's Celebration, or whether it's New Year's Kickoff. Everybody is fired up. I mean, and, and, and even the people who work in the hotel said, why are you guys so happy? What are you on? <laughs> all the time. Waiters, bartender, when I'm getting lunch or whatever. What, why are you guys so happy? What is that? What's driving you? People catch on to that type of behavior. People, oh, yeah. people want to be around that type. In fact, there's a study I'll be covering on my radio show this weekend. The scientists now have recognized that in the forebrain, right here in the frontal cortex, the prefrontal cortex of our mind and of our brain, there's a reward center. And our reward center comes from helping others. So if we help other people drop and release a few pounds, or if we drop a few pounds ourselves, and we get a compliment from someone else, the reward centers light up like a Christmas tree. It lights up like a circus. It's quite remarkable. It actually gets very dim around 2.30 and 3.30 in the afternoon. So you need to give someone a compliment at 2.30 or 3.30 in the afternoon. Give them a shot of greens. Give them an ice of delight. Give them, give them a, a want more energy. Give them a, a protein shake. Give them some ice of fruits. And guess what? The reward center will light back up again. And you're going to tell them, you look magnificent. You look fantastic. You're on your way towards greatness. You're dropping the weight. You're releasing the weight. You're going to be, you're going to be uh, a three-star in no time. So nice. the reward centers keep lighting up every time you reward someone. So that's how we operate. My dogs, my dogs are like that. They come and they kiss me. I know they want something. I give them the little treat. They're just all over me. Then they come back again a little later. I give them another one. Their reward centers light up. Human beings are exactly the same. Make sure you do that. Same with your wife. Same with your partner. We actually do that. We have a, a Marco Polo group for our team, and we, I, I, I'm just blown away sometimes by how nice everybody is to each other and how many compliments we get, but we genuinely mean it because we genuinely love everybody on this team. We have the most incredible team, and all of Isogenics, like the one team thing is, is huge, but we so appreciate you, Dr. Tony. You were so awesome. Does anybody have any questions? Raise your hands, wave at the screen if you have a question. Beth, you have a question? Unmute yourself, honey. Okay. Um, I have, one of the things that I have heard about, but I don't have any research for that I think Dr. Tony, you will have, re, you'll help me with that is I've lost 85 pounds so far in Isogenics yeah. and I um, started using greens because I met you at celebration. So I love them. Um, but I am wondering about, I've heard people talk about that um, your body gets balanced with isogenics products and it increases the thermogenesis in your body. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, and, this is, and that's, um, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. Well done, Angel. Well done. Thermogenesis is a term, thermo, you know, thermo means thermo, right? Genesis, thermo means temperature. Genesis means create heat. And so thermogenesis, very much like what I explained earlier, is a process where when we eat food for fuel as a source of energy, we create what's called thermogenesis. In the old days, there used to be a thermogenic tablets that people would take and make people race like crazy. You think you were on a drug or something, like, like having 14 cups of coffee at one particular time. There's like, that, that was thermogenesis that was dangerous. These are the phenteramine and the various drugs that were, that were um, released that were banned by the government. Thank goodness they were. So thermogenesis is a process where we eat food and when we eat that food, it's going to do one or two things. It's going to nourish you. It's going to balance you. It's going to satiate you or it's going to make you unwell. Or it's going to make you overweight. It's going to cause you to gain a few pounds. And it's going to make you miserable. And you can't fit into your pants. And they say the greatest single cause of weight loss in America is the high school reunion. Thank goodness mine has passed. <laughs> So, so that's what thermogenesis is. Then there's other fuel that you can take into your body, such as our greens and our fruits and our proteins and our want more energy and our onyx supreme. And they're in a pre-digestible state, meaning they're plant-based alive. This is what sets us apart from every other country and their company and country too now, 14 countries. Why do you think we have been so successful? If our products didn't do what you know, you guys know what they do because you've lost 85 pounds, you know they work. I helped my, my sister-in-law lose 95 pounds in Phoenix, Arizona. She couldn't even go to her own daughter's wedding. She, was, she just felt so bad, 95 pounds in six or seven months. So when you eat our plant-based foods, 
as we mentioned earlier, not to be so repetitive, it doesn't require any energy. And so it doesn't require any energy. Hence the reason why you were able to create thermogenesis in your body because the food that you were taking in through isogenics or the protein shakes and the other phytonutrient rich compounds that you were taking in started to speed up your metabolism in a nice way. It's like revving your car up when you're going up a hill. If you keep it on 15 miles an hour, it's going to take you forever to get up there. You're going to be stuttering and sputtering all the way up there. But when you put your foot to the pedal and foot to the accelerator, boom, you go right up that hill so fast. So that's what thermogenesis is. You created thermogenesis by bringing in these plant-based nutrients into your body and your basal metabolic rate, which was sluggish and slow, which happens for a lot of women if there's a lot of stress or if there's a newborn child in the house, you just gave birth or whatever, or God forbid, something terrible happened like we pray for the people in Mexico tonight and uh, the little children and, and all of those people that are affected. Our life is so precious. So when you take these superfoods into your body, guess what it does? It raises your basal metabolic rate. So it creates uh, thermogenesis. It creates energy. Calories are only burned one way, through heat. So it creates heat. That's what a calorie is, a measure of how much heat is created in the human body. So when we create heat, it creates thermogenesis. And as a result, more calories are burned, more calories are expended. And as a result, you also um, drop weight in the process and get lean and get fat. Hence the reason why you created that. Then, of course, balance comes along. I mean, you get a little sedentary and say, you know what? I'm just, I lost 85 pounds. I'm happy right now where I'm at. And then sometimes that behavior causes you to reverse. So the real key is to be, I always tell people, always be snacking always be snacking or always be taking shakes because everybody's body is different. Your body's different than my body. We're all using um, different behaviors, different lifestyles, different environment, different foods, different actions, different reactions, different culture. Everything is different in everybody's family pretty much. But at the end of the day, we're all, I said this so respectfully, we're all doing the best we can with what we have. We're a huge work in progress. Mm -hmm. So be mindful of what you eat and treat your body as a vessel the way God intended for you to have it and doesn't want you to abuse it and wants you to really be honorable uh, to yourself and to your family and to your friends, but primarily to yourself. And so when you honor your body as a vessel, as a temple of the Most High, then you create this balance. And when you create this balance, then there's more joy and more happiness and you can get a handle on just about anything. Then you can really go to work if you've done uh, to manifest anything you want. So if you were able to release 85 pounds, you can become the next isogenics millionaire for sure. Yes, Beth is on her way. For sure. Leave. Somebody just said you oh, made three-star, Beth. Did you make three-star? No. Oh, gosh, no. That's your goal. I'm working on executive. Well, Beth and her husband both have released a lot of weight, and she's been doing fantastic, yes. and she's just a light on our team. She's, she's amazing. And... You're talking about eating all the time. I feel like I eat all the time, but I have done so well with maintaining my weight loss, but I eat, I feel like I eat more now than I used to, but I eat constantly. And <laughs> my employees are always like, you're eating again. I'm like, yeah, I'm hungry again. So I eat a lot. I snack a lot throughout the day. And I know that's good for your, keep your metabolism revved up. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody else have a question before we end this call? Anybody, anybody, are we good? All right, I'm gonna unmute everybody really quick so you can all thank Dr. Tony. Thank you so much, Tony, for giving up some time for us tonight. We so appreciate thank you. Thank you so much. Time. Let's do this again. Thank you, yes, Doctor. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You very much. I'll talk thank to you, you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bless you guys. Thank Love you much. Let's get a Super Saturday going so I can come out. Yeah. Wow, yeah. oh, that would be nice. I well, hey, I will be at ICU, so you should come to ICU. Where's I'm in Michigan. Where's that? Uh, ICU's in Phoenix. When? Uh, October 4th, 5th through the 7th. Well, ask Travis to invite me. Cool. You better call him tonight. Tell him you want oh, me to speak. I will, I will get on that right now. Which <laughs> Travis? Garza or Ogden? No, no. Travis Garza. By okay. the way, by the way, you guys, you have the power. Travis.Garza at IsogenicsCorp.com. I wish to have the greens, uh, certainly the greens, if not the fruits, in the 9th day and the 30th day, please. Oh, yes. Email, I need you to email Travis and say, please, yes. the fruits, the fruits yes. in the 9th yes. day and the 30th yes. day. Because it's, it's optional in the presidential pack. And I've, I've been on, I've been sparring with the company, like the Democrats and the Republicans. I've been sparring, <laughs> with, them. I've been sparring with them to get them to carry the greens and the fruits. Hello, darling. Get the greens and the fruits in the 9th day and the 30th day. 
Yeah, I, I tell everyone that's starting that they need the greens for sure, and then the fruits as well if they are not getting enough fruits. Bravos.garza at isogenics.com. We're, we're going to all send him an email from Team Shady, and we're going we're gonna to pound him. And tell him to uh, at the IC University. I didn't even know it existed. Yeah, it's coming up in Phoenix. I will uh, I'll, I'll send him a message about that. Brent, maybe you can, as, as one of our isogenics millionaires, put a good word in to Travis for us. Because uh, the only yeah, way I'm to get I'm good with that. to speak is okay. when you guys request me. Yes. Well, let's request Dr. Tony for ICU because I'm going to be there. And that way fourth, we can see him fourth, and thank him in person. And sixth, then the fourth, fifth, and sixth? Uh, the fifth through the seventh of October. Oh, it's the fifth through the seventh. Okay. Uh huh. In Phoenix. I'll put that down or make a note of it right now. All right. Let's 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 all send Travis an email and say we want Dr. Tony at ICU because that way we can all thank him in person. You got it. You guys are great. All right. I'm